you turn in your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Romans, we're going to look in chapter 11, and we're going to read quite a bit, or read, make just a few comments on this chapter, uh, a, lot of good, a lot of good studying in here, and we uh, hope that we can be a blessing uh, to all those that are watching and all those that are listening. Uh, we thank the Lord that we're able to... Uh, uh, do this to stand before you this morning and we are thankful that uh, the Lord has strengthened our health and our bodies and we're, that we're feeling much better. Amen. Uh, we ask that you would uh, uh, try to pray for us as we try to teach and that the Lord would uh, help us with the scriptures that we want to read and make maybe a comment or two more. But in verse 1 of chapter 11 of the book of Romans, <clears throat> talking about Paul is writing to the church here and he is telling them some of the things that has happened to the Jewish nation and uh, what has happened to them and why they are in the condition they're in today. They're without Jesus Christ because they wouldn't accept him. And this is what uh, Paul was trying to talk to them about uh, writing to the church. I say in verse 1 of chapter 11, I say then, hath God cast away his people talking about the Jewish nation, and God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. And of course, uh, uh, this uh, Benjamin, you would remember, I believe in Adam's class, we, we talked about uh, 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 Benjamin, and I think that was the same one that called, that his mother wanted to call him Benoni. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's just a little bit on this. But God, in verse... Uh, Two, God has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Would ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, Elijah, how he made intercessions to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, dig down thy altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. And uh, if you remember this, this we've studied it some when Elijah... Uh, ran from uh, Isabel, uh, Jezebel, or uh, mm -hmm. Ahab's wife, and uh, uh, he was—he had killed these old false prophets, and uh, he was—he uh, got afraid, and he ran off and went down and up in the mountains and hid himself. And uh, uh, the Lord spoke to him out of a still small voice. Amen. And he said to him, "Here." Uh, uh, in verse 4 and I notice here but he what answered what but what saith the answer of God unto him I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee of the image of, uh, to the image of I, uh, Baal and I was reading this and I was studying this and I was thinking about the past few weeks of my life, I have uh, I have come to realize that there is there is people out there that's still serving the Lord. Amen. And you know we get down sometimes, and what we do, where we mess up so terribly bad is we look at this television, mm -hmm. and the news media would have you to see the worst of the worst. Right. They want to tell you about all the murders. They want to flash up on their, that screen all the sinful acts of the world. They want to encourage you to fall in line with those that are doing these things. And by that, if you if you if you stay stay too close to it, you'll get to the point where that, hey, it's all over with. It's mm -hmm. all gone. And, and I'm, I'm sure this was, a, was, was with, with Elijah, what he thought about it. But God assured him, hey, I've still got an elect out there. Amen. And I am of the, I, I believe with all my soul this morning that God has got an elect out there. And that we as God's people don't need to get that discouragement. 
because that's one of the best things that the devil can use on a person is to get him discouraged. Right. To get him down and he gets him to thinking, well, there's no reason for me to pray for reviving. There's no reason for me even to think about going to church. There's no use for me to do this or do that because, hey, the world is going to pop it. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, listen, people, there are still good people out there. There are still people out there that you can talk to uh, uh, about the Lord. There's Amen. people out there that that uh, are not scared to stand up and say, yes, I love the Lord. And, uh, you know, uh, Brother Larry and I had a little experience with that other a couple weeks ago uh, uh, up the way here when we went out. And, you know, I asked, I asked some of them, in there, hey, are you, who's saved in here? You know what? Hey. There was a couple stuck up their hands and said, yeah, I said, praise the Lord. Others, others, you know, kind of sighed on them out. But listen, my point is this. There are still people out there that are serving the Lord. Now, they may not, they may not, they may not believe exactly like we believe and we, we might look at them in the wrong way. And, and, but the thing of it is, listen, there's people out there that say, Amen. And there's people out there that you can talk to. There's people out there that you can fellowship with. There's people out there that you can get comfort out of knowing that the world is not all bad. And so here we see Elijah out there, and he says, uh, uh, Lord, there ain't nobody left. There's nobody left to, to help me. But God assured him, hey, no, don't get upset, Elijah. I've got 7,000 men out there that's still ready to go. And so that should be our, our uh, encouragement this morning. Hey, we've got people out there that if we, can, if, we, if, if we want to, we can invite them. Or they might come to church or they can support. You know, uh, it, 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 there's still plenty out there. Amen. So this morning... And that's one of the things I wanted you to see here. And so he says, But what saith, in verse 4, But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed to the knee, or bowed their knee to the image of Baal. Then he said, Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant, a remnant according to the election of grace. Amen. And people, there is a remnant out here that's according to, the, uh, to God's grace or according to uh, the election of grace. There is, a, there is a remnant here upon this earth. And there will be a remnant, I believe, until he comes. And then when that last one is saved, then the remnant uh, will be going. It will turn back over to the Jews and he'll deal with the Jews. But right now, the Gentiles... Are, are the ones that God is working with. And there is a remnant of Gentiles out there. They may be in Russia, they may be in Hungary, they may be in the United States, but there's a remnant out Amen. there. And so we need to be we need to be encouraged. We need to say, hey, listen, there's still there's still a little light. There's still a little light gleaming there with God's promise that there is a remnant here. There is a remnant there. And so we need to be we need to be uh, thinking about how that how that we can get closer to the Lord, how that we can serve the Lord in a great way, because we've got that encouragement. Because, Amen. Listen, if I'm the only one saved, th that's sad, but listen, I'm not the only one saved. There's a remnant. God's promise is there's a remnant out there, and he's going to deal, he's going to deal with the Jews, and he's going to have that remnant. Uh, I mean, he's going to do the, deal with the Gentiles, and he's going to have that remnant. Until he starts dealing with the Jews and he's going to carry the Gentiles out and then that remnant will be gone. But listen, he's still got that remnant that he's going to have that 144,000. And he's going to, there's going to be a remnant here as long as there's an earth. I believe. Amen. So here again he says <clears throat> in verse 6, And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Amen. And of course we know uh, what Ephesians says. Otherwise... Grace is no more grace, but if it be of works. So grace is not works, and works is not grace. And what he's trying to say, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. And so 
uh, he, it kind of gets confusing here, but all he's simply saying is what Ephesians 2 and 8 says, For by grace are you saved uh, through grace, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works. And so grace, grace overcome, overcame the, the law where the works were, then grace did much more abound, and we're under grace. And so we see here that he says in, uh, in verse 7, What then? Israel has not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the elect election has obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Right. So there, there is a remnant, there is a remnant that has obtained election or grace. <clears throat> and so he says, uh, in verse, uh, I want to uh, I want to read something over in Romans nine and thirty, verse thirty one. Notice what it says, Romans nine, verse thirty one. But Israel, well, and look, look in thirty. Uh, let's see, thirty. What shall we say then, that the Gentiles which follow not after righteousness hath attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not obtained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling block. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling block, the rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And so the, the Jews, again, have not obtained grace. They haven't because they rejected Jesus Christ, and that was their stumbling block. They stumbled right over him. They saw him. They seen the miracles he did, and yet it was a stumbling block to them, and they stumbled over it. Notice now, <clears throat> back in our lesson in uh, uh, verse uh, uh uh, sell, uh, sell it. Uh, what then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blind. According Amen. as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumbering eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. So God has given them that. He's opened ours. He gave us an open ear. And he's given us an open eye that we might see it, that we might hear it. And so many of the Gentiles walk around with their fingers in their ears or their hands over their eyes, and they reject him. They're doing the same thing as the Jew did. They're rejecting Jesus Christ. And one day, one day when the rapture happens, then they, we will be caught out and they'll be left behind. Amen. That's, that's, the, that's the thing about this. So now, notice here in... John, I want to read a little something here to you, if you would. Bear with me while I get there. In John, I believe it's John 20. <clears throat> oh, I'll look at I mean John 12. Sorry. John 12 and verse... Uh, John 12 and verse 20, I think it is. <clears throat> It's for verse 40. John 12, 40. Sorry about that. All right, verse 40. He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their hearts and be converted and I should heal them. These things said Elias when he saw his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. So we see here this morning it says, For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. So we see what has caused this something. We see what has caused these, these things to happen to them. And then, uh, again, in Acts, we want to read you a, a scripture in Acts 28. <clears throat> and I'll get to our meet um, at the law, maybe. Acts. Acts. 
This is, this is a good scripture right here. Acts 28. Uh, and 28, 20, Acts 28, and verse 26, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles. Now he's saying this about the Jews, and they would not hear because of their uh, their uh, ears being closed and their eyes being shut. And he says, and when he had, uh, he says uh, uh, in verse 28, be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came into him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. And so we see that after he had preached this message, Paul stayed there another two years. He preached the same message to them. He kept on preaching it. And they were walking around blind. They were stumbling over the thought that Jesus Christ was not the Messiah, that Jesus Christ was uh, an imposter, and Paul preaching to them Jesus Christ. And this is what has brought them into captivity time and time again. This is why now that they're walking around with their eyes blinded and they can't see and they're still trying to obey the law and they're failing miserably every day. And they're God's chosen people. The apple of his eye. And so by this we know that God will, will turn back to them again. And one day, one day there will be, there'll be something happen in the Jewish nation. And they'll receive him. They'll, they'll see the Antichrist as he comes into the temple. And as he sits down and as he proclaims himself to be God. Then their eyes will be open, And they'll understand and they'll real, they will know that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. That Jesus Christ is the one that died for their sins on the cross of Calvary. But until that time, they're blind. They cannot see. They cannot hear. They cannot uh, not understand. All they want to do is obey the law. And so this is why we, we wanted to bring this to you. Now, notice but what David had to say about this in verse 9. And David said, Let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. And let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their backs always. Now this is what David was saying and it was, it was talking and he was talking uh, as if God was talking to them. And he says, I say then, have they stumbled that they should, they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. And so the reason why that we have the opportunity to understand God's word, we have the uh, wonderful thing of knowing what grace is, and that we, we understand that God put them to one side and he started dealing with us. Amen. Is to make them jealous. It's not because that he seen more in us than he did in them. Listen, his love is still over here with the Jews. But people this morning, we ought to praise God. We ought to, we ought to be more thankful to him than what we are. We, ought, we, we, we just do not, we just do not, 
serve God like we should and praise His holy name like we should. Amen. And I'm speaking for Junior Page. But listen, this morning, one of these days, this is going to be over with. Mm -hmm. And our opportunity for grace is going to be cut off. And he's going to say, come up hither. And we, those, I should say, not say we, but those that are lost, those that have not accepted or heard the voice of Jesus Christ or received the salvation of Jesus Christ are going to be left here. Amen. And they're going to be, there's no chance for them. And they're going to suffer. They're going to suffer. And Jesus is, and God is going to come back to the Jews and there's going to be a reviving. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, listen, the Gentiles will have no part in it. Just the same way as the Jews are now. The Jews are blinded. They're deaf. And they can't, they can't understand. You go over there with these missionaries and let them preach to them. And the biggest majority of them does not hear. Now, there's a few that hears that God has mercy on. But listen, that's going to be the way it is with the Gentiles. After God comes back to the Jews, the Gentiles' ears is going to be closed, their eyes are going to be uh, closed, and they they won't be able to understand. But while time is is for that, you can. If there be one here this morning that 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 is not saved, or if there be one that's watching over the YouTube, if you're not saved, this morning is the time that you need to start thinking about this thing and and praying that God would would uh, call it calling you into himself because it's going to happen. Amen. There's going to be a cut off day just as sure as, as there was for the Jew when he when he turned the his back on the Jew and said Gentiles, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to come to you and I'm going to make the Jews jealous for that they will come because they are my people. Amen. And that's and that's that's it in a, in a, in a nutshell. And so this is what David is David is saying here when he said to them that let their table be made a snare and a stumbling block. And of course, this is the words, same words that, that uh, uh, Paul was writing, uh, uh, or J and Jesus and, and over there in Acts, and they were talking about that. It's the same thing, and, and, and it's, 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 it's happened, and it's going to happen again. So here, if you wanted to read this uh, uh, in Psalm 69, too, is where David was, was talking. If you want to mark it or, or, or make a note of it, but he says, here he says, then in uh, 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 verse 12, Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, <clears throat> and the diminishing of them be the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. Amen. And so there is going to be something great, great, great happen there. Uh, when when all of this takes place, their fullness, they're they're coming back to uh, to the to God. So he says, "For well, I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office." In other words, he's saying in, in one place there, I believe it's in Galatians, there he says, "If anybody else coming to you and preach any other gospel, even if it be an angel." Listen, you don't believe. Paul is speaking here to the to the Gentile. He says, I'm magnifying my office. I'm telling you what's right. And I'm telling you what God has told me. And so here he says, if by any means I may provoke the immunization them which are my flesh and might save some of them. Of course, in Galatians, you can read in verse 520, there's some uh, reference to this. But he says... For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. And that casting away is when he when he just turned his back on them and said, Hey, you're blind. You can't hear. I'm going to the Gentiles. You won't serve me. He says, For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall be the receiving of them, of them be but life and death? And so his promise here is to the Jew. That he's going to come back to them. And he said, here's the promise. What shall be the receiving of them be but the life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. Now he's getting into this crafting. And he's talking about the first fruit, which was Jesus Christ. And he says, if it, if, 
if the first fruit be holy, the lump, the lump be the Jew, also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. And he's, he's, he's talking about here this morning of grafting. And we that, we that know, I mean, anybody that knows much about grafting, this grafting was done in a reverse nature of, 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 of it, it was done opposite of nature, the way that it was done. Now notice, <clears throat> and if, no, no, no if, if, in verse 17, and if some of the branches be broken off, and thou be a wild olive tree were grafted in among them. Now, the first thing of all is when you graft a tree, you go out here and you find you a tree that is no good, if it's an apple or a peach or whatever, and you dig it up and you cut the root off and you graft a good limb onto it. What, what happened here was there was a root and there, and he took a wild, wild tree and grafted into the root to make it bear pure fruit. So it was right reverse and, and it just don't happen naturally. That, so here we see, notice here, <clears throat> and he said there was a wild olive tree were grafted in among them and with, with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree. And so we, we were the wild olive tree. We were the one that was grafted into the land. And he took the Jew and he cut some of them off and made place for us. Or he cut them all. He cut them all off. And he made a place for the, the wild tree, the Gentile nation, to be grafted in and which made it bear fruit. And, the, and you see, it just don't happen that way. Uh, the, the, the graft that's put in is the one that's supposed to be the good tree. But we were the wild tree. And he changed it. And he made us, he made us a partaker of the root, which was perfect, for that we could bear fruit. And, uh, and, and, it, and still, uh, we, don't, we still don't bear the fruit that we should bear. Amen. But, uh, but anyway, I hope this is. I hope you. I hope you're getting with me on this. But anyway, uh, thou will say then, in verse 19, the branch were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. And so it wasn't nothing that we did. We didn't. We didn't do anything. Uh, to get us uh, the Jew cut off and us grafted in, we didn't do it. But he did it to make them jealous, Amen. to make them uh, seek him and to find him. And he he's put he he's, he showed them time and time again about this, and uh, uh, and they don't understand it. And the and the Gentiles they won't believe it because if they did, they'd serve God better than what they do. Amen. But here he says. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, the Jew. And thou standest by faith, the Gentile. Be not high-minded, but fear. In other Amen. words, don't we can't go around bragging and saying, "Hey, we're God's we're God's people," and the old Jew over there, he don't he don't want to serve God, and he the fool he only. Listen, we need to pray for the Jew people. We Amen. need to for pray for them because listen. I'll tell you what, if you, want, if you want to be in good standing with God, you pray for the Jew. Because listen, that's God's chosen people. He loves them today just like he loved them 2,000 years ago. He still loves them. And, and people only because that he's trying to make them jealous are we where we're at today. So we ain't got a thing in this world to brag about. You're right. We ain't got nothing to brag about. The only thing that we can do is say, thank you, Lord, that you had mercy and grafted us in because he could have left he could have left the tree ungrafted. He could have left the Gentile go one way and the Jew the other. But he loved the Jew enough that he did this for us to make them jealous. Now Notice here, 
in verse 21. For if God spared not the natural branch, the Jew, take heed lest he also spare not sisters. People, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And these, the, the Gentile, the Gentile is going to get in such a shape that there's not going to be anybody, there's not going to be anybody that's serving the Lord. And that's when the rapture takes place. And listen, the, the, the Jew, the Gentile will be cut off and he'll reach back over here and he'll get the Jew and he'll bring them back and he'll graft them back in and he'll present himself to them and they'll accept him. So... Behold, in verse 22, Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fail. Se se ver severity because towards thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou shalt be cut off. Now, it don't mean that you're, you're going to be uh, sent to hell. But the thing of it is, uh, uh, it's, 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 I'm going to read something to you in John, John 15 to bear with me just a few minutes, more minutes, I'll be through. John 15 to. <clears throat> John 15 to, or, or start with verse 1, it'd be better. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he pruneth, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burnt. Now it's not saying this morning when I read this to you, here about uh, cutting you off. All he's doing is cutting you off in, in the thing that... He's not, he's, you're, you're not, they, the ones that he cuts off are lost in, 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 in that they, they will be out of his presence. But here he's talking about they, that men cast them off. Listen, you won't have, if, 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 if you're cast away, cast off from God, you don't have, you don't have that love for nobody. You don't have, uh, nobody won't listen to you. Nobody won't pay no attention to you. You can't be a witness or nothing. And, and, and also, when he cuts them off, listen, he's going to set, set the, take the gentle, the, the <clears throat> Jews, and put them back in the place of you. And so, you want, those that are cut off can, in, can enjoy the Lord Jesus Christ, can't, can't have that uh, 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 love in their hearts and things like this. And plus that, uh, I don't think, I think it's your ears, those that are cut off, he's, he's through. He's through with them because, listen, he's given them the chance and, and now he's through with them and they will, they will stay here on earth until the, the rapture, the uh, calling out takes place for those that are lost. And that's it. And so this is what, what he's talking about, I think, here uh, in, in this lesson here. So, uh, and, and I hope and not, I'm not confusing nothing the situation here, but he says here... Uh, uh, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Then, then, in verse 20 again, well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and that's talking about the Jews. And then, uh, I'm going to go back to where I was at. Uh, please help me. For if thou, and uh, notice here, in verse 24, if thou were cut out, of the olive tree, which is the wild by the nature, and were grafted con contrary to nature, to a good olive tree, how much more, and I've read this, but in verse 25, for I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own concept, that blindness in part is, is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come. And this is, what, this is what is fixing to happen. The fullness of the Gentiles is fixing to come. And 
I think, and I'm not trying to say this to scare anybody or to tell anybody, but it's good advice. Listen, if you're not if you're not been saved, if you know that you're not saved, I would suggest that it be a good idea for you to start praying about situations. Amen. Because here he says uh, he says I would not that you should be ignorant of this mystery, and he's talking about when he takes these branches that he's grafted in. And he cuts them off again and he brings the Jew back. Lest you should be wise in your own concept that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become. And I believe that the fullness of the Gentiles is at hand. Amen. I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is going, to, is going to appear. He's going to come up and he's going to call those that are saved out of this world to be with him. And that's the fullness of the Gentiles. Because there's no, there's no, there's nothing left for the Gentiles that are, that are back here. So, and the verse 26, and so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away <coughs> ungodliness from Jacob. Amen. This is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. According to the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But it's touching the election. They are beloved for the Father's sake. Amen. So there is a Jew. The, the Jew is a, an elected. Uh, he's elected. And he, <coughs> he is fixing to come back on the scene. And the Gentiles is fixing to leave. The Gentiles is going to be removed. And those that have been grafted in. And they, they have produced fruit. They've been saved. They'll be with him when he calls them out. And the Jew will take place. And so it's time done gone. But anyway, I want I want I want you to understand what's fixing to happen. Amen. Yeah, the Gentile is fixing the Gentile is fixing to go home. Mm -hmm. And listen, if you're a Gentile, which I think all of us are, and there's one that's not saved or two that's not saved or whatever, listen, it's it's getting late in the game. Mm -hmm. You need you need to get you need to get everything over. And I hope. I hope it's saving you too big of a, a hassle for y'all and a mess because listen, we need we need to understand what's fixing to happen. Amen. And listen, I want to encourage you again. There's still people out there that's being saved. There's people out there that, that you can talk to, that you can be a witness to, and they can witness they'll witness to you also. And you can you can that spirit will bear witness with you. And so don't get down and get discouraged. Thank you all. Thank you.